Hi everyone, my name is Jonathan Holodic and I'm the policy director here at the Center for Rural Affairs. And more importantly for today, I am also a livestock producer. I raise Berkshire hogs on dirt, grass-fed feeder cattle, and broiler chickens in the summer. And about 11 months ago, it became very difficult for me to get a locker day. That's a really big problem for me because I sell direct to the consumer. My entire business model relies on securing locker dates to process the meat that I sell direct to that consumer. Since I am also a policy professional, I took this opportunity to identify and develop policy solutions that might help improve the situation. A lot of you will remember that at the federal level, we helped develop the Strengthening Local Processing Act. And here at the state level, we helped author LB 324. So today I will spend time describing the current bottleneck, which might be especially helpful for those of you who aren't already caught in the middle. And then I'll talk more about LB 324. We expect the Ag Committee to vote on the bill this week and we'll need your help if we're going to see it signed into law. So starting off with some context, I think we all know that the coronavirus pandemic has disrupted our food supply. Outbreaks have impeded work at most of the regional packing plants. And when these plants pause, large scale beef and pork producers turn to local processors to fill the void. This has created a debilitating bottleneck at every local meat locker in basically the whole region. They simply don't have the space or the equipment to keep up with demand. And that's left the family farms and our growing direct sales industry without a crucial partner. Small and mid-sized livestock producers like myself are really struggling as a result. Local processors play a fundamental role in a small livestock producer's business plan. We sell our product directly to the consumer and we see these local processors as very trusted partners. And before this year, a typical producer could schedule locker dates four to six weeks in advance, which I missed. Now the wait time is 20 to 24 months and that means reservations must be made more than one year before that animal was even born. And consumers are being impacted too. This uncertainty doesn't just affect producers. Consumers are now demonstrating a newfound demand for local foods that we're having a hard time meeting. Families are now spending more time cooking at home and they're learning that local meat provides a better tasting and a more affordable alternative to the big box store. And that is especially true with pork and chicken. Many people have purchased a freezer but they can't find any more meat to fill it. And local businesses need our help too. This growth in demand is a tremendous opportunity for the processor and the producer alike. It's a chance for the processor to grow their business, creating jobs and activity on Main Street, and it helps the producers like me grow a premium product for a new market, earning more than what the regional packing plant can offer. We can't afford to miss this opportunity. We think LB324 offers a solution. There are two sections. Section 10 makes it easier for the consumer to purchase individual packages of meat directly from the producer or the processor. Following federal law, it creates a framework for developing free market solutions to meet current demand. Section 11 creates what we're calling the Independent Processor Assistance Program. This new program provides a roadmap for increasing local processing capacity and expanding market access for all producers. Very importantly, this legislation applies federal law. The Federal Meat Inspection Act determines how and where meat can be processed. Exemptions from these requirements are found in section 623 and explain that state or federal inspection is not required if the animal is slaughtered and processed exclusively for consumption by an owner of the animal and members of his or her household. And when I say inspection, I mean of the meat itself. The facility is inspected just the same, no matter if it's a USDA or a custom exempt facility, the same standards apply. These regulations state that there may be more than one owner of a live animal, provided proof of ownership is established prior to slaughter and a record is available. This legislation also has precedent. <clears throat> right now, Wyoming state law already provides a herd share framework. Legislatures in Colorado, Montana, and Texas are considering similar proposals, and at least 16 states have created programs to increase the capacity of local meat processors in response to the current pandemic. Right now, this list includes Iowa, Kansas, Missouri, and South Dakota. 
And right now I'm going to transition into a more detailed explanation of the legislative text and the components of the bills themselves. If that sounds boring to you, that's fine. You can stop now or mute and come back in about two minutes. So starting with section 10, um, as I mentioned earlier, it is guided by legislation passed in the Wyoming legislature, which has been reviewed by the USDA Food Safety and Inspection Service. They've been working together to get that implemented. In our bill, it allows Nebraska-based livestock producers to safely make smaller shares of an animal or herd of animals available to consumers. So when a consumer purchases a share in an animal or a herd of animals, that individual becomes a part owner of that animal under the Federal Meat Inspection Act. Now that they're a part owner, this claim to ownership allows the producer and the consumer to do business under the custom exemption established in section 623 that I mentioned earlier. Every processor can operate under this section, whether you're a USDA or not. Under section 623, FSIS guidelines require that ownership is transferred prior to slaughter, a record is made available, and the meat is consumed by the owner or their household or their guests or their employees. A lot of you who are producers right now or who support local producers might be thinking that it's easy to meet these requirements when selling animals by the whole or the half, and that is true, but it's a lot more difficult when you're selling smaller shares. It's just simply more difficult to keep track. This legislation provides a path to protection for the producer and processor when ownership is divided into these smaller shares. The producer must make the name and the address of each owner available to the processor. The producer must develop a bill of sale and a herd share agreement for the consumer to exhibit ownership, prohibit resale, and arrange for boarding. Responsibility for complying with this framework falls on the producer and not the processor. All safety and sanitation standards established under Nebraska law must still be followed. Moving on to section 11, this is what we're calling, as I mentioned before, the Independent Processor Assistance Program, which is a new effort to help increase the capacity of local meat processors and expand market access for producers. Right now, implementation of this program is not mandated and no funding is being requested in this bill. Instead, the language provides a set of strategic guidelines and minimum standards to follow should the Nebraska Department of Agriculture choose to move forward. Potential funding sources include the CARES Act, future stimulus, or appropriation. I mentioned earlier, 16 states already had similar programs in place. Nearly all of those, um, the legislature had a role in either establishing program guidelines or appropriating that, uh, that funding. Um, in this case, we would expect the legislature to play a role in getting that program in place and those guidelines in place. So when there is funding made available, it will be easy for the executive or the administration to move forward with it. Under section 11, to qualify for this program, the applicant must meet a set of minimum eligibility standards. You must currently operate as a slaughter or processing facility in good standing here in Nebraska, demonstrate employment of fewer than 25 employees, and demonstrate existing sales revenue of less than $2.5 million annually. Approved applicants can receive financial assistance for eligible expenses. These include modification or construction of buildings, packaging, processing, and storage equipment, technology to improve logistics or enable e-commerce, and workforce training. I mentioned earlier that LB324 is now before the Ag Committee. We had a very good hearing on February 2nd, and we received a lot of support from producers and processors alike. Right now, the next step is for the committee members to meet in what is called an executive session to decide which bills they want to send to the full legislature. And if the committee does a vote to advance, this bill will likely need a priority designation to guarantee floor debate. We're going to know more in the coming days and weeks, but we encourage you to reach out if you'd like to help. I believe you'll be able to find my email in the comment section. And check in for questions. I don't see any, but if you have any, please do send those via email or give me a call here in the office. Thank you all for your time today and enjoy the rest of your week.